Hi and welcome to this brief video intro to Make Tile, a Blender add-on for creating your own customised 3D printed dungeon tiles. It's at a very early stage of development and is nowhere near feature complete yet, but this should give, should give you a good idea of what I'm working towards. I'm designing this to be as easy to use as possible and to be usable by people with absolutely no Blender experience, as well as to be useful for experienced Blender heads. If you already know how to use Blender, feel free to skip ahead. Uh, you can find a download link to the add-on in the description. If you've never used Blender before, keep watching for instructions on how to install it and activate the add-on. First, navigate to blender.org and download the latest version. While waiting for that to download, head over to my GitHub and download the latest release of MakeTile. Once everything's downloaded, install Blender and launch it. You might get this pop-up, but that's just because uh, it's a new version of Blender and Microsoft hasn't said it's okay yet. The first time you start Blender, it asks you to set a couple of options. Uh, you don't need to worry about this. The only thing I recommend you change is binding the spacebar to the search function, since we're not going to be doing any animation. Click on Next and then click anywhere on the screen to get rid of the pop-up. With 2.8, Blender's controls became much more standardised and easier to use than in the past. So left click on something to select it, uh, click and drag to box select, uh, left click anywhere in empty space to deselect. If you right click on something, uh, Blender will bring up a context menu with various options. And if you hover the mouse over any of the icons, it will bring up a little pop up that will tell you what the icon does. Uh, to navigate around the screen, pressing and holding the middle mouse button and moving the mouse will rotate you around the screen. If you scroll the mouse wheel, that will zoom you in and out. And pressing and holding shift and the middle mouse button and moving the mouse will pan you around the screen. If at any point you get lost, uh, then clicking on an object and pressing the full stop or period button on the numpad uh, will zoom you into whatever object you've got selected. If you get really lost, uh, click on one of the objects in the outliner list on the right and then press the period key on the numpad to zoom in on that object. That's really all the controls you need to know to use MakeTile. Uh, so to install the add-on, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and click on Install. Uh, find wherever you save the zip file you downloaded from GitHub and uh, install it. You should then bring up MakeTile uh, in this menu and click on the little box to the left to activate it. If it doesn't automatically bring up MakeTile, uh, just type MakeTile into the search box. On the right hand side of the viewport, you'll see a little arrow. Uh, click on this or press N on the keyboard to bring up the right hand menu. In here, you'll see the Make Title tab. And this is where the add-on has all of its options. So if you're not comfortable with Blender, you can pretty much stay in this menu and ignore the rest of the program. First, we're gonna delete our cube by left clicking on it to select it and pressing delete on the keyboard. Then we're going to leave everything as it is and click on Make Tile, which will create a little 2x2 two two open lock compatible wall tile. If we have a look at this, we can see it's got sockets in the side for the open lock clips, as well as the base sockets for attaching it to floors and for stacking the tiles. Uh, currently, as well as straight walls, uh, we can also create rectangular floor tiles. My next job is to write generators for the other types of open lock tiles, uh, so curved walls, pillars, triangular floors, etc. But for now, we've just got the two types. Uh, so let's delete our wall, and I'm just going to drag this menu out a little so we can see the options a bit better. Changing the, the tile type to rectangular floor and clicking on make tile will generate an open lock comp compatible floor tile. Just like with the wall tile, it's got sockets in the correct places. Uh, these tiles can be any size you want. So if we delete that and change the tile size to 4x2, we get a 4x2 tile. If we look at the bottom, we can see that a few extra ports of supports have been added for easier printing. If we do the same thing with a wall tile and uh, crank up the Z height, you can see that MakeTile will add extra clip sockets at the correct height. As well as open lock style tiles, you can also have plain tiles currently, or tiles that mix open lock and plain elements. And in future, I intend to add support for more tile systems. If we delete that wall and change the tile blueprint option from open lock to custom, we'll get another couple of options, base type and main system. At the moment, both of these are set to open lock, so if we click make tile, we'll get an open lock tile. If, instead, if we instead want a plain base, we can change the base type to plain and we'll then get the option to set the size of the base separately to the size of the rest of the tile. Uh, clicking on Make Tile will now get us a tile with a plain base. If we delete that and change the main system to plain as well, 
get the option to set all three dimensions of the tile and of the base separately. If we click on Make Tile now, we'll get something a bit odd, because currently the Y size or thickness of the tile is set to 2, or the base size is set to 0.5 inches. Uh, so if we delete that and set the Y thickness of the tile to 0.5 as well, and click on Make Tile, we'll see that these are still not the same thickness, and that the main bit of the tile is now narrower than the base. This is actually intentional, because we're going to be displacing this part of the tile outwards with a texture, and we need to leave space for that to happen. At the moment, these are just blank tiles, and if we print them out, uh, there'll be nothing on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset that to a 2x2 two two tile, uh, click on Make Tile, and then I'm going to click here on Create Lighting Setup. What this does is it makes some lights in the background, and it switches the render engine over from the preview engine to EV, which is Blender's real-time rendering engine. As you can see, a material has now been applied to our wall. At the moment, this is just a 2D texture, so if you print this out, it's still going to be a flat tile. So what we're going to do is uh, select the side by left-clicking on it, and I'm going to click on uh, Make 3D. If we give it a couple of seconds, uh, we'll see that it's made it into a 3D texture. So what Blender's doing here is it's taking that texture and it's distorting the mesh underneath to make it into a 3D model. At this point, we could just export this, uh, print it out, and everything should be fine. Uh, but I want to show you how to customise these tiles. Um, so we're going to click on the side of the tile and click on Return to Preview. Below the Make 3D button, you've got a Material drop-down menu. At the time of filming, there's only the two materials, uh, basic stone wall and simple bricks, but I'll be adding many more soon. If we swap our stone wall texture with a simple bricks texture, it'll change that to a, well, a simple brick texture. Again, if we click on Make 3D and wait a couple of seconds, uh, we'll make this into a 3D texture. Now below that, we've got a, a Material Options drop-down. In here are loads and loads of options, which are basically ways of messing about with this texture, customising it. Uh, the ones at the top are shared between all textures, all materials, and allow you to control the location, the rotation, and the scale of the texture. But more interestingly down here, we have a selection of custom options for each material. So to get started, uh, we can change the width, or we can change the height of our bricks, uh, we can change the offset, uh, and we can also change the amount of uh, bricks which are cracked. Uh, we can even change the scale of the cracks. Um, now if you go up to the top of the material options, uh, you'll see that each material has a randomised function. Uh, changing this number will generate a different variation of each texture, so you can create infinite variations and avoid the issue of all of your tiles looking the same. On the brick texture, this just changes the number of cracks, but if we switch back to our basic stone texture, we can see that, that this has a really big effect on this type of texture. Before we export this, uh, one thing we can also do is we can preview this in 3D before we make it sort of actually 3D. And we do this by changing the render engine over from EV, which is real-time render engine, to Cycles, uh, which is Blender's non-real-time render engine used for producing images and movies and things like that. As you can see, when I move the mouse in Cycles mode, uh, the renderer can't keep up. Uh, this is a proper ray tracer, so no matter how fast your graphics card is, it won't be able to keep up with Cycles. So this is normal, this is what it should look like. Uh, the reason that Cycles is useful for us, though, is that even though this is still texture, it's actually distorting the geometry uh, by subdividing the mesh and displacing it in sort of almost real time. This is useful because one of the options which we have here is the Strength option, which controls how far out the texture will jut from our tile. If we crank that up, obviously that kind of looks a bit rubbish, but one of the things we could do is, on this texture particularly, the setting called Dress Stone Surface. This option will slice off the top of the texture and make it flat. So if we slide, set that to 0.3, we can see that we've got sort of very deep stones, but they've also been sliced off. It's quite good for floor tiles particularly, uh, because it means that you can create a, a polished stone floor effect, uh, sort of like this. So now we've got our tile, we're going to voxelize it and export it. Down here below the material options, we've got the voxelize settings. Uh, I'm just going to leave these settings as is and uh, click on Voxelize, making sure that I've uh, made my uh, material 3D first. So what this is doing is it's taking all the meshes that make up our tile, uh, joining them together, 
and then reconstructing them out of voxels, which are basically lots of tiny little cubes. So then we, what we end up with is a single unified object that should be free of any of the geometry issues that can crop up and cause difficulties when you go to print out uh, tiles. If I go into edit mode uh, by pressing tab on the keyboard, you can see that this is a single unified mesh. And it's preserved the details in the areas it needs it and it's simplified the areas where it doesn't need so much detail in order to keep the file size down. Uh, in the voxelize menu, the quality option controls the size of the voxels used. So in this case, smaller is better, as smaller voxels will capture more of the detail. Uh, the adaptivity setting is how much the flat bits will be simplified. Uh, if you crank it up too much, it will also start simplifying detailed areas, uh, giving you a lower quality mesh. Uh, the merge option is basically, uh, if merge is selected, uh, then it will merge all the mesh together and it will voxelize it. If merge isn't selected, um, it will leave the separate bits of the mesh um, as they are, um, and it will just voxelize the uh, textured areas. Once that's done, click on export settings and export tile. Uh, on Windows, this will create a new folder in your user directory by default, but obviously you can change that. So if we close Blender down and uh, open up a slicer, uh, press a slicer in my case, and uh, import our newly created tile, you can see that we've now got a tile which is the correct size and it's uh, ready for slicing. So I'll show you a couple of these tiles uh, which have, you know, I've actually printed out at the end of the video. Right, so back to Blender. Now that's pretty much everything at the moment. Uh, so the next stage is to flesh out the tile options so that you can also do curved tiles, pillars, triangular floors, etc, etc. And then I want to start adding uh, some more systems as well eventually. Um, after that, I want to put in a little system whereby you can easily drop in props and attach them to these tiles. Attach doors and windows which can cut through the tiles, uh, a few other features um, which will be useful for people who don't have a lot of experience in Blender. Obviously if you know how to use Blender uh, you can do that yourself already, um, but some of those operations can be quite complicated. So I want to have everything in one place um, so that people don't have to worry too much about using the rest of Blender. So the end point uh, is to hook all of this up to an online library uh, where you can download different materials and props, uh, some of them for free, some of them paid for, um, allowing you to create a sort of infinite library of different tiles and make sort of whatever dungeon or even building that you want out of these tiles. So if you want to keep up to date with Matile, uh, it's still in an early stage of development, uh, but I'm adding uh, new features uh, pretty much every day at the moment. Uh, so subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you come across any bugs or have some feature requests, uh, please put them on GitHub in the issue section. Um, at some point in the new year, there will be the inevitable Patreon and Kickstarter. Uh, but for now, I'm just working on this for free and uh, releasing uh, everything I do for the community for testing. Okay, so that's everything. Bye for now.